In this PowerShell video, we turn our attention to events in PowerShell. Events matter because they let us do things asynchronously without waiting around for the system. And they are possible because PowerShell is an object oriented language that supports objects that can have events. So if you've not fully understood yet that PowerShell is much more than just a scripting language, it's an object oriented development environment. The use of events is a great way to see how that works. Now, everything in PowerShell can be represented as an object, and we're going to create an object for the timer. Now, keep in mind that by object, we have the entire file system as an object. We can have an exchange server as an object. We can have a Visio document as an object. We can have an individual file as an object. We can have all kinds of system processes and system items available as objects. These objects, many of them are able to fire or throw events, to raise events, to tell us that something has occurred. This is how programming has been done in Windows for a very long time. And if you've ever developed in, say, Visual Studio with VB.NET or C Sharp, you've probably seen events that are raised, whether that's a mouse click or a system activity. Well, events are the same way. So how do we find out what kind of events are available? Well, it's a pretty safe bet that a timer is going to have an event, but we can look at the members of any particular object and we can see what's listed as methods, properties, and events. And in fact, we can filter that down to just be events. And we can see that the timer has a disposed event and, in, and an elapsed event. So now we want to go ahead and we're going to We've instantiated the object of a timer and we're going to go ahead and register and say, well, we want to listen to the elapsed event that can fire with that timer. Now, how do we find out which events are available? Well, we can use the get member and you're probably going to want to refer to the documentation of the API or the object itself if you're doing complex event based programming. But we're going to tell the system that we want to listen to this event named elapsed. Now, the easiest way to work with this is just to poll. And that means every now and then we check for the PowerShell event queue to see if there's an event waiting for us. And the event queue is empty right now. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to set an eight second interval on the timer, tell it not to reset itself and go ahead and start it. And then we're just going to come along every now and then and check to see if there's any events waiting for us. It's like calling the post office and saying, you got any mail for me today? Oh, there it is. There's our event. It's fired. Now this event will remain in the event queue until we clear it. So it has an event ID of two and it's still there and it will be there forever. So at some point we're going to want to go through and uh, get that event and remove it. Now we can remove all events like this, or we could remove it specifically by its ID number, but we're going to remove them all. And we're actually going to go ahead and also look at our event subscription and unregister it uh, so that we're not subscribed to that event any longer. We've cleared our screen and instead of polling continuously for the event, we're going to tell the system to wait for it. Now we're going to go ahead and register once again or subscribe to that event. But this time we're going to add a source identifier. The source identifier is simply a string. Uh, by default, the system will create a GUID for one, but we want to know what the name's going to be here at design time when we're creating our script. So we're just going to call it waiting for timer. We're going to go ahead and we're going to create our timer. We're going to set it to 10 seconds and we're going to tell it that it's enabled. And then we're going to say, wait for that event to occur. Now, if you look down here, our, 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 our UI is blocked. We can't do anything. We're waiting. And then the event fires and we get control back. Now that's a lot better than polling. We didn't have to write a polling algorithm. We didn't have to decide how often to poll or anything like that, but it's certainly not ideal because we're still waiting around uh, and the UI is blocked. We can't do anything else while we're waiting. So we're going to remove any events that might be in the event queue. We're going to remove any subscriptions that we might have. And we're going to look at how to handle them asynchronously. Now we're going to set up our timer once again, and we're going to have it run every two and a half seconds. Only we're going to tell it to go ahead and reset itself every time. And we're going to enable the timer. So our timer is actually now running, but it's not giving us any events because we're not currently registered for them. But we're going to use the register object event again. And actually we don't need that plus sign in there. 
Uh, and what we're going to add this time, we still have our source identifier so we can follow our event, and we're going to add an action block. Now you can define this as a variable, you can store it in a function, but we've just put it right in here to tell, to write to the host every time that this event fires. So now we're going to subscribe to that event. And it tells us that we're subscribed, and we'll see that the timer is firing. Now it's a little bit hard here because it's such a console based kind of thing, but you'll see that we still have full ability to do everything. Our, we're not blocked, it's running on its own thread, it's running in the background, it's running asynchronously. And when the timer fires, it's calling our code. It would be a callback function, we don't talk about it that way in PowerShell, but if you've done event based development, this is not new. If you haven't done development, and you're coming from the administration side and the scripting side, it can be pretty cool. Notice up here in my integrated scripting environment that I'm not in debug mode. There's not a script running. The script is done. It's just registered. And every time that event occurs, it goes ahead and calls that code to put the time out on the screen. Now, if we look at our event subscriber, then we can execute new code here. You can see here it is. Here's our subscription ID. Here's our identifier that we're using to look at it. And it's actually using the automation and job system under the hood to make this work. And then at some point, we're going to want to unregister for this. We don't want to see this timer tick anymore. So we can unregister for the event. Previously, we've just deleted all of our registrations. In this case, we're just going to delete this specific one by name, which is another good reason to give it a name. And there we go. We don't see our timer ticks occurring anymore.